Hello, I'm Sheldon Axler, the author of Linear Algebra Done Right. This video discusses the section of the book titled Dimension. Let's begin with a quick review. Recall that F denotes either the scalar field R of real numbers or the scalar field C of complex numbers. Also, V always denotes a vector space over F. One of the main concepts we discussed in the last video was that of a basis. A basis of a vector space is a list of vectors in that vector space that satisfies two conditions. First, the list has to be linearly independent, and second, the list has to span the vector space. The easiest example of a basis is the list shown here, which is a basis of Fm. This basis is called the standard basis of Fm. Now we come to the question of how we should define the dimension of a vector space. Intuitively, we want the definition of R2 to be 2, the definition of C3 to be 3, and so on, so that the dimension of Fn should equal n. That suggests, when we look at the example above, that perhaps we should define the dimension of a vector space to be the number of vectors in a basis for that vector space. However, there's one potential big problem with that definition. For example, we see above a basis for Fn, the standard basis, but there are an infinite number of other bases for Fn. Suppose that not all these bases have the same length. Then we would have a real problem defining the dimension of a vector space to be the length of a list of vectors consisting of a basis. Fortunately, that does not ever happen, which is the content of our next theorem. This theorem is what will allow us to define the dimension carefully. The theorem states that any two bases of a vector space have the same length. Let's look at the proof of this theorem. Suppose we have a vector space V and B1 and B2 are bases of V. By the way, this automatically implies that V is finite dimensional because having a basis, in other words, having a list that spans and is linearly independent, implies finite dimensional because, for us, lists are always finite. Because B1 is a basis of V, it is linearly independent in V. And B, because B2 is a basis of V, B2 spans V. So we have a theorem that says the length of every linearly independent list is less than or equal to the length of every spanning list. Thus, the length of B1 is less than or equal to the length of B2. Now interchange the roles of B1 and B2, and we can conclude that the length of B2 is less than or equal to the length of B1. Conclusion, the length of B1 equals the length of B2 as desired. We have proved that any two bases have the same length. Now we can define the dimension of a finite dimensional vector space to be the length of any basis of the vector space. It does not matter which basis we use because we have just proved that all bases have the same length. We denote the dimension of a finite dimensional vector space V by DIMV. Let's look at two examples. First, the dimension of Fn equals n because we have the standard basis of Fn and it has length n. Thus, this works out as we expect. Our second example is fix a positive integer m and look at all polynomials with coefficients in f and degree less than or equal to m. A basis of this vector space is 1, comma, z, comma, up to z to the m. That basis has length m plus 1, and thus the dimension of p sub m of f is equal to m plus 1. Now we come to a major result, so we will proceed it with a few seconds from Beethoven's Victory Symphony. Recall that to be a basis, a list needs to satisfy two conditions. First, it needs to be linearly independent, and second, it needs to span the vector space. This theorem says that we only need to check the linear independence condition, provided that the list of vectors has the right length. The right length here means the length should be the dimension of V. Again, the theorem says if V is finite dimensional, then every linearly independent list of vectors in V, whose length is the dimension of V, is a basis of V. Let's look at the proof of this theorem. Suppose the dimension of V is n, 
n, we have vectors v1 up to vn, and that list is linearly independent in v. So the length of this list is the right length. It equals the dimension. In a previous video, we discussed the theorem saying that any linearly independent list can be extended to a basis of v. So we can extend this list v1 up to vn to a basis of v. However, we know that every basis of v has length m. So in this case, the extension is the trivial one, meaning that no elements are adjoined to v1 up to vn to get a basis. Conclusion, v1 up to vn is a basis of v as desired. Again, what we have shown is that if we have a linearly independent list of vectors in v, and if the length of that list is equal to the dimension of v, then we do not need to check the second condition. That list is a basis of v. Let's look at an example of using the theorem we have just proved. We want to show that the list 5, 7, 4, 3 is a basis of the vector space f2. Well, this is a list of two vectors. We have a special test for two vectors, namely a list of two vectors is linearly independent if and only if neither vector is a scalar multiple of the other vector. That's clearly true for this list of two vectors, and thus this list of two vectors is indeed linearly independent. We also know that f2 has dimension 2 because the standard basis of f2 has length 2, and therefore the dimension of f2 equals 2. Thus, by the previous theorem, this linearly independent list of length 2 is a basis of f2. We don't even have to bother checking that it spans f2. Now we come to another important theorem. Recall again that to be a basis, a list needs to satisfy two conditions. It needs to be linearly independent, and it needs to span the vector space. We proved a theorem saying that we can check just the first condition if the length of the list is equal to the dimension of the vector space. This theorem says we can check just the second condition, which is the spanning condition, again, if we know that the length of the list is equal to the dimension of the vector space. Let's prove this theorem. Suppose the dimension of v is n, and we have a list v1 up to vn that spans v. In other words, we have a list of the right length, and it spans, and we want to know whether it's linearly independent. So in other words, is it a basis? Recall the theorem we discussed in the last video, stating that any spanning list can be reduced to a basis. So we can reduce the list v1 up to vn to a basis. We throw out some elements, and we'll get a basis. However, we do know that every basis of v has length n. So in this case, the throwing out is the trivial one, meaning that no elements are deleted from v1 up to vn to get a basis. In other words, v1 up to vn is a basis of v as desired. Again, this theorem, combined with our previous theorem, says that if we have a list and it's the right length, meaning the length of the dimension of v, then in terms of proving that it's a basis, we need to check only one of the two conditions to show that it is indeed a basis. Our last theorem in this video gives a formula for the dimension of the sum of two vector spaces. Here's the formula. If u1 and u2 are subspaces of a finite dimensional vector space, then the dimension of their sum is the equal to the dimension of u1 plus the dimension of u2 minus the dimension of the intersection of the two subspaces. I'll let you read the proof in the book, but I want to give some motivation for why you might suspect this formula would be true. The idea is to think of the analogy between sums of subspaces when dealing in the theory of vector spaces and unions of subsets when dealing with set theory. Suppose we have some finite set and two subsets of it, and we ask how many elements are there in the union of the two subsets? Well, if you think about it for a second, you'll see that the number of elements in the union of two sets is the number in the first set, plus the number in the second set. Ah, but maybe we've counted some things twice, namely those that are in both sets, so we have to subtract the number in the intersection. That's exactly what this formula for the dimension of a sum looks like. 
Please read the proof in the book. This concludes the video on dimension.